There are a few places that simply have to be on your South American itinerary, and the Atacama Desert is one of those. Its diverse landscape is a dream, and its unique beauty cannot be underestimated. But even though it is a popular, well-known place, getting there and getting around can cause you a bit of a headache. In this video, we will share our experience of traveling through the spectacular setting of the driest place on Earth. Before we begin, we are Mark and Asa and we are currently traveling through South America. And as you will know if you have watched our previous videos, we are making our way back up the continent after spending some time down south in Patagonia. After spending a few days exploring Chile's capital of Santiago, which we'll talk about in another video, it was time to make the journey north towards the Bolivian border to a place called San Pedro de Atacama, the small town on the edge of the Atacama Desert that we would use as a base for our adventures around this amazing region. As always, there are a few different ways to get there. One option is to take a very long bus journey from Santiago, but you mustn't underestimate the size of Chile. It would take many, many hours in a bus, so in our opinion, you should choose the second option. Fly from Santiago to Calama Airport, and then take a transfer to San Pedro de Atacama from there. The transfer took us right to our Airbnb, and overall we found this route to be a very convenient way of getting to this remote corner of Chile. Uh, what's next then? Oh yes, how do we get around to see what all this fuss is about? The best way to get around the Atacama Desert is definitely by car. But finding something to rent is where the challenging part really started for us. Just like the problem we faced in Jordan when we tried to rent a car, we couldn't book online because we don't have a credit card and that made finding an agency to rent from frustrating to say the least. Eventually we found a company called Rent a Helux who just asked for a cash deposit of 700,000 Chilean pesos or the equivalent in euro which was about 800 euro. Now that we've found a way to rent a car, as the name suggests, the only vehicle they had available was this massive Toyota Helix and it was 100 euros per day to rent. We decided to bite the bullet and go for it as this adventure was very high on our bucket list before coming here. But we must admit that it was a bit of an unwanted sting to the pocket. And to add to our problems, Mark had never driven a car bigger than his mom's Toyota Oris. Never driven a manual right-hand drive car. Never driven on the right-hand side of the road and certainly never driven anything quite like this monster. Just a tiny wee car. It's a bus. <laughs> Nevertheless, fortune favors the brave and we were on the road albeit very anxiously. If you don't fancy renting a car, there are plenty of day trips to all the attractions, but as we found overall in Chile, they can be quite pricey. If, like us, you have planned on visiting lots of places when you're here, renting a car will definitely work out to be the cheaper option. The worst thing is that even if you pay for one of these overpriced tours, you still have to pay the admission fee to all the attractions on top of the overpriced fee that you actually pay for the tour. So for us, no thanks. On day one, we headed south, and our first stop was Magical Lake Chaksan. A stunning, picturesque salt lake surrounded by towering active volcanoes and inhabited by a flamboyance of pink flamingos searching for breakfast. Strangely enough, flamingos like salt water, even though it's not good for them. And in this pond here, you can see little tiny shrimps, and I think that's what they'd be digging for when they're uh, digging into the water to find some food. You could see flamingos really close, and it's really, really peaceful here. The reflection is so, so perfect, so it looks like a mirror. Actually, the color of flamingos depends on what they eat. So one of them are very pink because they eat something different, and some of them are more white because they eat something different. And it's funny how they walk and try to eat like a hoovers, you know? Chile is a real hotspot for active volcanoes. There are only just over a thousand active volcanoes in the world, and 150 of them are in Chile, making it about 10% of all active volcanoes are here in Chile. Uh, this one you can see behind me is called the Lascar Volcano. It is the biggest and most active volcano in northern Chile and it has had about 30 massive eruptions in the last 150 years. As we left early in the morning, we found ourselves here completely alone and really were able to take in our surroundings. There is something so peaceful about watching the movements of flamingos and to see them in this setting gave us a moment to really cherish. There is one thing we didn't really expect when we originally planned on driving through the Atacama Desert and that was how unbelievably scenic the road would be. We find it hard not to stop every 10 minutes just to pause and take a look at the ever-changing landscapes. For this reason, renting a vehicle is definitely our recommendation when coming here. It is so liberating to be able to 
to stop wherever you want and take in the jaw-dropping surroundings around every corner. Just a wee break from the video for a minute. We work hard on these videos and we realized on YouTube that only 2% of the people that watch our videos are actually subscribed to our channel. So if you're enjoying this video and you're not subscribed, can you please just click the wee button here? It would mean a lot to us and it would really help with the growth of our channel. The next two stops on our itinerary require some pre-booking, which to be honest, we thought to be a bit silly and outdated. We nearly got caught out here. We wanted to go to Lagunas Miscanti and the Salar de Aguas Calientes. Sir. Anyway, we only found out late last night that you actually need to buy a ticket online and get this QR code and then stop at this little village on the way called Sakare and they will print this for you and it's your ticket to enter both of those lagoons. Um, it cost us 15,000 each for both places online but you could get caught out here because there's no internet here and if you didn't buy it online apparently they don't issue a ticket when you get here. So it's like 100 kilometers from San Pedro de Atacama. You could easily get caught out without having bought a ticket so definitely beware of that. The thing that's annoying about it is that you have to reserve a specific time so we picked one o'clock not, not having a notion what time we'd be able to get here by because the roads are long and awkward and um, we arrived here at about 20 past 11 and now uh, we have to wait until 1 o'clock so yeah, not ideal at all. Apparently it's COVID restrictions and then, then there's no soap in the toilets. Makes sense. Anyway, on a more positive note, we were actually able to enter early so it wasn't quite as strict as we thought it might be. The road to Laguna Miscanti and Miniquez was up there with the very worst roads I've ever seen in my life but luckily, it was only this rough for a few kilometers before you reach the lagunas. First laguna you come to is Miscanti, a gorgeous salt lake with incredible views of the Ipera and Miniquez volcanoes. Just up the road from that lies Miniquez Laguna, which once again is at the foot of some more volcanoes and inhabited by a few dozens of these vicuñas. Both of these lakes actually used to be salt flats, but an eruption of a surrounding volcano around a thousand years ago blocked the water streams and the area was left with these two beautiful lakes. Although the Atacama is known to be the driest place on earth, something peculiar happened when we were at this particular laguna. Rain. We seen dark clouds and Asia was adamant that it wasn't going to rain and I said they, those are rain clouds and I told her an Irishman knows a rain cloud when he sees one. And here we are on the driest place on earth with the lowest precipitation levels anywhere on this planet and it's raining. <laughs> The rain turned out to only be a short shower and after maneuvering our way back down that bumpy bumpy road, we headed for our last stop of the day, Piedras Rojas Valley. The drive there was stunning. We encountered some more wildlife and we were once again mesmerized at the sight of the surrounding volcanoes. Piedras Rojas was a spectacular place to end the day sightseeing. Black volcanoes overlook this beautiful green lake and as you walk on the volcanic rock down to the lake, you can't help but be in awe of this unique landscape. This place was something we had never seen before. It was then time to drive all the way back to San Pedro, which was around 160 kilometers back up the road. Apart from those bumpy roads to the lagunas, the roads here were actually in much better condition than we expected, especially this main road that took us all the way back to San Pedro in just under two hours. It's not a long drive, but we were stunned at how often the landscape changed in just 160 kilometers. Looking back at day one of our Atacama adventure, it was a bit surreal to think that all these photos were taken within a few hours of each other. We now understand understand the reason this place is so highly thought of and we couldn't wait to see what day 2 had in store. After a well-earned rest, we once again set off on the road, but this time we kept it quite local. Just 10 minutes from San Pedro, you can find this incredible viewpoint of Valle de la Luna, or Moon Valley in English. This place is, as the name suggests, otherworldly. So much so that NASA have actually been known to use parts of the Atacama to test their Mars rovers. They say it's the perfect location to trial instruments NASA plans to use on Mars since it is as dry as the red planet and under constant assault from ultraviolet radiation. As we had scheduled to leave our rental monster back to the agency that evening, we headed back to San Pedro and decided to book a tour for the next day that would take us over the Bolivian border to explore the area's geysers, salt flats and more. But that's it for another video. 
That there is one place in Antagam Desert that we would really would have liked to have seen, which is called Laguna Boltanache. But when we were renting a car, they said that if you go there and something happens, they will not return a deposit to us. And before going there, I was also reading a blog and one photographer said that he has seen three cars there with the flat tires, which is obviously a horrendous experience. And apparently the road there is absolutely awful. So we just decided not to go there. If you want to experience this Dead Sea floating, lake <laughs> you can go to Laguna Sehar but we didn't go there because we've been to the Dead Sea just uh, this summer and we will still have to pay for admission fee and petrol so we decided to skip it but if you've never been to the Dead Sea I think it's a great option so Overall, the two days we spent in the Atacama were worth the stress and they were worth the expense of going here. It really is an amazing place. For a stress-free trip to the Atacama, we have put together seven points that we would have liked to have known about before committing to this trip. Tip number one, there's not a lot of information online, but fly from Santiago to Calama and then take a transfer from Calama to San Pedro de Atacama. Tip number two, Pre-book a rental vehicle with your credit card online and pick it up in San Pedro, not Calama, not Calama Airport. Tip number three, don't book a return transfer to Calama from San Pedro because you should definitely take the three-day tour into Bolivia that we'll talk about in our next video. Tip number four, take US dollars. They love US dollars here because its value is more consistent than the local currency and you can book your tours way cheaper by using US dollars. For example, as we said before, we booked our tour to Bolivia in San Pedro and we saved $100 because we just booked it with US dollars in cash. Bring, bring US dollars. <laughs> so this was a tip in our last video about Patagonia. I hope you watched that. Tip number five is to book an Airbnb with a kitchen because you're in Chile and eating out is just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Just don't, just buy food and cook. Tip number six, bring Chilean pesos when you go to the attractions because you need to pay entrance and they do not accept cards. And there are of course no ATMs in the desert. And bonus 6.1 tip exchange your money, do not withdraw it, because we didn't find any ATM that wouldn't charge you around 10 USD for just withdrawing your cash. And you can't withdraw more than 200,000, which is around $200. So just again, bring cash and exchange. It will work out way cheaper, trust us. Number seven, uh, don't forget to pre-book your trip to Laguna Mezcanti and Luna Minicas. Even though, as I said before, we think this is a really silly thing, you still have to do it, otherwise you'd be turned away. So don't forget to do that. We just did it the night before and it was pretty convenient. So do that. And you arrive at a town called Socare and they let you through. Bro. So overall, uh, was the Atacama Desert difficult to get to? Yes. And did we go slightly, maybe a lot over budget to come here? Absolutely. But to be fair, this place is absolutely stunning. And in the two days we spent driving around, we've seen some amazing places probably places that we'll never see again in our life so do you think it was worth it absolutely yes i'm really glad it's been in my bucket list for a long time and i'm really glad we've done it and we're going to be producing more and more videos about south america our channel is the perfect place to find all the guys you need and if you go to atacama to this amazing place we are positive you're going to have something to remember just like us